Hello and welcome to the Mount Hope Church Podcast. In a world that's dominated by fear, so many people are looking for a sense of security and preservation that they can count on. We're called to awaken a generation. Amen, church? We're awakening a generation to the things of God. We believe that the road to a better life begins with a relationship with Jesus. Join us now for a positive and lifting message that will help you move forward in your walk with Christ. And so Christianity is an active, I like to use sports, it's an active sport. It's, it's, it's your action, you're getting ready. And now, here's Pastor John Gallinetti. Christmas time and people are thinking about gifts that they want to give to family and friends and possibly they're thinking on what they might get from their family and friends as well and so but the Lord also has gifts that that he has given and wants to continue say that with me continue he wants to continually to give towards you see I found out that how I view God will largely determine how I receive from him and when I first learned about Mark eleven twenty four, 24, I was absolutely stunned. I said, surely that's not for today. That's, you know, that's for, that's for the super holy people and all of that. But God desires to give you good things. He desires to give you the desires of your heart. He does. I remember I was, uh, Dr. Roy Hicks, who is next to like a theologian, would come here often. He's not home with the Lord right now, and I was able to really get close to him and and he kind of took me underneath his wing and really poured a lot into me. We were out that country restaurant on I-75, country kitchen, I don't know, but anyways, they're all around America. It really impacted my life. I remember the name of it. <laughs> but he, the, the point, we're, we're talking everything, and the way he said something was stunning to me, and I never thought of it like that. He was talking about the goodness of God and how good he is, and he turned to me with that toothpick in his mouth, he said, you know, John, the Lord just doesn't know how good he is. And it just caught me. I said, what? The Lord is so good, he just doesn't realize how good he is. Have you ever thought of it that way? The Lord is so good, he doesn't realize how good he is. Everyone say, the Lord is good. Well, that scripture in Mark eleven twenty four 24 says this, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And it doesn't stop there because Jesus' ministry was marked by helping us pray and believe for good gifts from the Lord. Over in John 15, verse 7, it says this, and it's the groundwork to answer prayer, really. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Jesus said, you'll ask what you desire, and I will give those things to you. Herein my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So here's, here's some qualifications, though. There's conditions. God's love is totally unconditional. I'm mean, glad for that. I mean, however, his promises are conditional. They're based on how we applicate them or implement them into our life. And so if you abide in me and my words abide in you, so I need to make sure that the word of God is abiding in my heart. Now, it's easy to give mental assent to that. You know, we're in church and, yep, amen, help, amen, name of the Father. You got it right. But, you know, you have to carve out time in your life where you get your you're daily feeding your faith you're daily feeding your faith you see and so there's a lot of things that are placing a demand on our life in these last days that we're living in but you and i need to make a serious decision that i'm going to get the word of god into my heart i'm going to have a devotional time with the lord i'm going to get that into my heart if you abide in me and my words abide in you you shall ask what you will and it shall be given unto you so he's a giver. And then, here is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. What's that? That's prayer fruit. Well, that's productivity that's happening, being fruitful where you're glorifying the Lord. So when your prayers are answered, not only are you happy, amen, the Lord is happy as well, and he wants to answer your prayers. And so it doesn't stop there. How many glad you came to church today? In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus lays out even more groundwork as it relates to good gifts, he says this, ask and it shall be given to you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who asks what? Receives. Everyone who asks receives. Everyone who asks 
receives. I'm a broken record. Everyone who asks, receives. Ask, receives. So there's asking, and then there's receiving. Okay? And he goes on, he who seeks finds, him who knocks, it will be open unto you. And then he shares this, what man is there among you who his son asks for bread, will give him a stone, or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? I would never ask my dad for a fish. It's just we're in a different time right now, different generation. Back then, though, it was a big deal. But Jesus is, is sharing an incredible principle. He says, will he give him a serpent? If you then be an evil, that simply means being human. Old King James for being human. If you then be in human and ought to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give good things to those who ask Him? But thinking of all the great gifts that God has given to us, every day is a gift from the Lord. Every day that we have is a gift from the Lord. And you can complain during that day or you can be grateful. And I'm here to share you, it's easier to have a negative attitude, and I share a lot about positive attitudes in that course how to have a sparkling, faith-filled attitude that comes from the process of mind renewal. But you can be grateful during that day or you can complain. I got an unexpected bill yesterday in the mail and I looked at it. My first thought was to complain. I said, Lord, I just praise you. I just praise you, Lord. You're my, prov you're my provider, you see. And so you can get upset or you can, you can praise the Lord. The breath in our lungs, this is simple, is a gift from the Lord. A lot of, you know that. A lot of people you work with, they don't think that way. That's why you're there to be a light bulb. Ah. See, every day your ministry is to be a light bulb for the Lord. Just your face, your smile, your actions, the aroma of Christ on your life is an incredible witness in the time right now where people need so much hope. You know, and they'll come up to you and say, why do you smile so much? You can say it this way. It's Jesus. <laughs> no, don't do that, okay? <laughs> you say, well, well, you know, man, it's, it, it's the Lord, and he's doing some incredible things. It's the word of God that, that, that's in my heart, okay? And so everything that you and I have is a gift from the Lord. Think about this. The Bible says that God's mercy, here's another gift. God's mercy is new every morning. Where would we be without the mercy of God? Just like, if it weren't for God's mercy, there we go. It was out of God's mercy that he sent his son, Jesus. This is simple stuff, to die upon a cross to take my place and your place. Paul in Titus says this. This is incredible about, you know, just how we used to be and how people are and what Jesus will do for them. He says, for we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, envy, hateful and hating one another. Wow. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. So there's a lot in there right there. But Paul was saying, this is how you used to be hateful and hating one another, operating in jealousy, you see, living in malice. But when the mercy of God, the mercy of God. So every day is a gift from the Lord. If you don't look at it that way, the breath I breathe is a gift from the Lord. The mercy of God, see, don't take it for, advantage, don't take it for granted, is new every morning, the Bible says. Is new, actually, every morning is a new start for you and me. Whew, it's a new start. It's a gift called God's mercy. Lights are a gift from the Lord, aren't they? <laughs> and so there are so many gifts that has been given to us when we open up to his kindness. And so the gift of salvation, eternal life, bar none is the greatest gift God gives. It doesn't matter how dark and how bad your past or your sin is today or tomorrow, whatever, the blood of Jesus cleanses all of that away. That is a gift. That is an incredible gift. It's the only gift that will allow you to get into heaven as well. And so bar none, it's the greatest. And so the gift of forgiveness, or all these gifts, is instant when somebody repents. It's instant when someone says, Jesus, forgive me, come into my heart. Instantly, we're forgiven of that sin. When you vocalize your need of forgiveness to God. Someone may say, well, no, 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 it's not that way. Yes, 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 it is that way. 
when someone genuinely asks for forgiveness, God will forgive. There's no earning it. There's no working for it. It's called mercy. It's called grace. There are two separate things there, but I mean, that's what it is. We're saved by grace. That is a gift, not even of yourself. It is a gift of God that he gives us to call on him. And so these are gifts that are given to us. I mean, when you think about it, I'm speechless. My jaw's on the ground of all the gifts that God gives us daily and then says, I'll answer your prayers as well. Elbow your neighbor and say, get your act together. (laughs) If you don't have one, just do it by faith. Get your act together. (laughs) Every day I wake up now and I say, Lord, I thank you. You're Elohim. That means you can create something out of nothing. You're my God. And I vocalize, obviously, you know. Lord, you're my deliverer. You're my savior. You're my healer. You're my provider. You're my protection. Thank you for that. As I acknowledge you over my life, over my finances, my family, thank you for directing my steps in Jesus' name. So it's just, wow, it's something. But just to, um, to give us a, a, a good foundation on the gift of God's forgiveness before we get into the other things. In the book of Psalms, it says this, and I hope that the Holy Spirit stamps this on your heart today. Because there's so many Christians that live in the past yesterday's just yields up all of this stuff and torment and, 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 and just haunts them where they can't move forward in life. Even people go to church, but not you, okay? But Psalm 103, but the Word of God is incredible. And, and if we want to know God, we look to His Word. Psalm 103 says this, The Lord is what? Merciful and gracious, and He is slow to anger. Slow. And abounding in what? There's that gift again, mercy. He's abounding in mercy. There's all sorts of gifts we're learning about today. Forgiveness, the gift of eternal life, salvation, mercy. His mercy. It goes on. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his, his what? His anger forever. See, the Bible says that his anger is but for a moment, but his goodness is for a lifetime. Eternity, really. He has not, this changed my life. He has not dealt with us or you according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Sin is just simply missing the mark. We just miss the mark. Iniquity is way worse than sin. Iniquity says, I know it's wrong, and I'm going to do it anyways. Oh, you rascal. We've all been rascals, haven't we? Thank you for your enthusiasm this Sunday morning. So we've all been you, see, see, you know it's wrong, but you go ahead. How many are glad that, that he forgives our sins and our iniquities? Yeah. See, what this is slow to anger. So I grew up in, in, in just an atmosphere where people would say, you know, God's going to get you. And it painted a picture in me that, that I can never be right with God. And my past, I really couldn't be right with God. I needed God bad. But even after I got saved, there was so much, you talk about purging and renewal that's still taking place, that he gave me his gift of righteousness because I repented. And now I can approach him without the sense of fear, guilt, inferiority, as if sin never existed. Hello! That's a gift, Amen. It's like, whoa. And so he's not dealt with you according to your iniquities or your sins. And we know it will open the door to things. He's, but when you seek him, he won't. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed your transgressions from you. Now, God has the ability to bury stuff in the deepest part of the sea and never remember it again. That where you bring it up, speaking of iniquity and sin, he will say, what are you talking about? He's already forgiven you. He doesn't even think about that anymore. So if God doesn't think about that anymore, why are you thinking about that? Go to the beach and have fun, but wait till June. See? And so over in Hebrews 8, it says this, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and lawless deeds. I will remember no more. So there's the gift of salvation, 
the gift of eternal life, two separate things. The gift of His mercy, the gift of forgiveness, and doesn't stop there. There are more gifts. There's the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus spoke to 500 believers after His resurrection and said, I want you to tarry or wait in Jerusalem until you be filled with power from on high. I want you to wait for the promise of the Father to come upon you. Don't even think about doing anything and living this life and being a witness for me until you're filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so the gift of the Holy Spirit flushes out the fear of man in our lives, fills us with might and power to live out the Christian life and to be a bold witness for God. Here we go. Acts chapter 1, it says, To whom he also presented himself alive, after his suffering by many infallible proofs, not just a couple proofs, many infallible proofs, being seen of them by 40 days, the word 40 is purification, it's just something when you look through it through the entire word of God, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Now this is after his resurrection, okay? Which he said, you've heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So the gift of the Holy Spirit is a separate experience in submission to or subsequent to salvation. Salvation is the most important, but the immersion of the Holy Spirit makes the gift of salvation so real in our life. And it makes you a powerful little machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're living in the last days, and there's no way we can overcome the temptations, the onslaught that is coming our way. Just look what COVID did. Look what COVID did. Some of the other things transpired too. And so you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need the clothing upon of the Holy Spirit and working with the Holy Spirit to lead you and direct you, strengthen you and comfort you, our standby, our parakletos, our helper in the end times, more so now than ever. Jesus spoke to 500, only 120 obeyed him. Still got that problem today. Only 120 obeyed him. And those 120, you hear about them throughout the word of God. The other 380, we don't even hear about them anymore. Yeah, God loves them and all of that. But would you agree with me? They disobeyed the captain's orders. Would you agree with me on that? That's pretty simple. Class participation is really good right now, okay? <laughs> It's really simple. They disobeyed the, the captain's orders. As he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, but do not even try doing it until you're immersed. The clothing upon of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So it's a, a separate experience in submission to the gift of salvation. Now, the Holy Spirit comes in when you're saved because he's the one that does the changing on the inside. But you see, there's an immersion. There's a, down, a downpouring uh, 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 just a, a, a immersion of the Holy Spirit that most of us pretty much know, you know, about and walking in, that enables you to be the witness that God's called you to be. There's no fear of what man is going to say. It's like it, it's flushed out of you, you see. And the moment you begin to share Christ with others in a unique way, creative way, your testimony is always the best. That boldness only increases on the inside of you. Why is that? Because the communication of your faith becomes effectual, fervent, alive by the acknowledging of every good thing that's in you. The more you acknowledge it, the more it becomes real on the inside. That's not just a principle, you know, just to claim the promise of God. It's a principle in witnessing. That when you share the gospel to your friends and loved ones and to, and, and to your workmates, to your students that you go to school with, that it becomes so real on the inside of you. And so... There are many reasons the Holy Spirit has come, the gift of the Holy Spirit. But he's come for three primary reasons. Number one, so you can live the life, that you can live the life. There's no way a part of the Holy Spirit we can live the sold-out life for Jesus Christ. Amen? Number two is to be a bold witness, like we've been sharing about. The Holy Spirit has not come for us to have some mighty rush during worship time. He's come to make, give us nerves of steel. He's under the hardest of pressures and trials that you won't cave and you won't give in because the spirit in him that raised Christ from the dead also dwells in you. Amen? And so you're going through that problem. 
You're, he's going to walk right through it with you. And His mercy and grace is going to, it, the Holy Spirit empowers us, strengthens us to push through and to move forward and allow nothing to stop us. Okay? So He's come to live the life. Okay, there are many reasons, but primarily live the life and to, um, and to be a bold witness, to share the gospel. And don't, don't be offended when people don't receive what you have to say. Quit being an American Christian. Okay, the, the, the early church got, got persecuted left and right. It doesn't mean go out and be antagonistic and, and canned and all of that. But don't get moved when people don't agree with you. People aren't going to agree with you all the time. Hello? Okay. They're not going to agree with you all. Get married. You'll find out that real quick. Okay? And so... <laughs> but some people are so afraid to talk. Oh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, just, I just don't I just don't I just don't I don't I don't want them to say things about me if I share Christ with them. You mean you don't want to know the people that you love God? Get over yourself and die to yourself. Elbow your neighbor and say, he's speaking to you. <laughs> okay, you know, get over yourself. Three things that Americans, wor Americans worry about the most. Their health, their money, understandable. And the third thing, this is the latest stat, is what people think and say about you. When you serve God with all your heart, you can kiss that goodbye. Amen. Kiss it goodbye. Kiss it goodbye. Because people are going to talk about you. They're going to criticize you, which the Bible calls persecution. And is this really true? Jesus said when people talk to you about you that way, rejoice and be glad for great is your reward in heaven. <laughs> you don't even think about it like that. What did they say? But we live in a country that everything is such... We have boards upon boards of opinion. What do you think? Well, I think if we wear a green tie instead of a blue tie, things would have been better. And they just, they just and they mount up and mount up, and it's board after board, and, and meet just all these opinions. Oh, don't you just, God, don't you just, don't you hate it? It's like, oh my gosh. And so you got to know something that when you turn over to your heart over to God, it's not about you anymore, it's about the gospel. It's about reaching people in your family. And if your family doesn't want anything to do with you, that's their problem. You know how many holidays I got together when I first got turned on to God? They said, oh my gosh, you're going to pray. They would say that stuff to me. They would criticize me royally just because I simply had a genuine passion for God. And I've shared this before with you. When I found out about a prayer life, and I was born and raised a Catholic, And I was always taught to pray. I was taught to obey God and all that. It didn't mean anything to me until I got born again. And the Spirit of God came in me. And then I was learning about from my pastor how to pray. So I started praying at, well, it was like 5.30 in the morning or 6 a.m. I left work at 6.30, so it was from 6 to 6.30. And I started to pray. And my mom, this is when I was a senior, uh, uh, just out of high school would at, at, at like 6 15 she would open the door just to crack and then shut it i'm, I'm telling you the the doggone seriousness of this okay and then the next morning the same thing and on the third morning something about three on the third morning i said mom you want to come in and join me what's wrong and 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 she comes in she's all worried I, i'm just i'm just so worried i'm so worried i said what are you worried for come on in here and soak in the presence of god what are you worried about? You're, you're praying. Oh, you mean I'm doing normal Christianity? Is something wrong? You're praying. I said, serious, Mom? You wanted me to do this growing up, and I never did. Now I'm doing it right now. Oh, I know. I just want to make sure ah, that everything's okay. Everything is fine. Everything's great. Obviously, your heart was right. But here's a woman who went to church her whole life and never even had a personal prayer life. And a person that was dra drastically changed by the grace of God, a trophy of grace pulled out of the miry clay. How many remember keggers? 
I'll leave it at that. <laughs> and so the change, and the change affects your mouth. You're not saying F this, F that, F that, F that, F that. I was, about, I was around another hunter last week, and they dropped so many F-bombs, I thought, dear God, I don't even think if you get born again, you'll change. But anyways, <laughs> that's not true. They would. They would. You ever have a conversation in your mind as you're talking to people? I mean, they said so many F-bombs to me. I said, i got to go and just wash with soap or something. It was, it was so bad. You know people like that, too. Some people, they just keep going that route. They just all like, oh, I'm sorry, I said it again. <laughs> and so when I got born again, guess what? My language began to change. When I swore, I felt bad down here. Well, that's where the Holy Spirit is at. And I swore as a believer years ago. And I, I grieved the Holy Spirit. Oh. It was just out of a mistake. Well, don't look at me in that tone of voice. You're not perfect either. <laughs> and so anyways, um, you, you know, you just, you, 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 get, you get born again. The Spirit of God comes in you, and you start pressing in. You become really sensitive how you talk. You don't want to be taking the Lord's name in vain and all that. Why do all these movies have to take, say GD? Why do they say, oh, devil? You ever think about that? I know I'm not very corny right now. Have you ever think about that? Oh, the devil. You know, or just... Christians say that. Why, why do you guys say, God damn? Why do you have to do that? God's name is to be praised, amen? amen? But you know, we're living in a world, and that's what sinners do. Sinners, sinners trash talk other people. They, they swear. They drink. They look at porn. And they just, you know, do some other things as well. That's what sinners do. They're sinning. So it's not like, oh, I'm so much better than you, even though I am. But anyways, uh, you know, you know, because of the blood of Jesus. No, I used to be that way, so I just thank God. When I came away from that guy's dropping so many F-bombs on me the other day, I said, dear God, I need a bloodbath in your presence, Lord. How did I get to that point? By spending time in prayer. Where you become so sensitive. Not where you become, you know, where, where you're not, uh, not unrelated. I, I knew right where he was at. I didn't get down on him because he was dropping all these F-bombs on me. And hopefully I'm going to see him later on today. I'm believing God. I'm going to get a big deer later on today, and I'm going back to that dude. And I'm going to saturate him with the gospel today because he opened up to me. Anyways, I'll, get, I'll, I'll let you know what happens next week, okay, uh, to be continued. But my mom, you know, she just, what? is everything okay? I just, literally, I'm telling you the truth. I mean, she went to church all life because you're praying. So I'm not going to keggers anymore. I'm not partying anymore. Now I'm a trophy of grace and you're worried about me? I just want to make sure everything's Okay. Nudge your neighbor, tell him he's talking to you. <laughs> so, and so I said, Mom, everything's great. How many glad you came to church today? Okay, so, so the gift, there are all these gifts, the gifts of this Holy Spirit, for many reasons, lead us and guide us, comfort us, strengthen us, all that. Empowers us to live the life. Boldness to be a witness. And also, the ability to pray in the prayer language known as glossolalia, that's the Greek word for tongues, which is a language never learned by the intellect. So when you pray in the Spirit, you bypass the intellect, and you pray because it's like a hotline to heaven. Now, listen to what 1 Corinthians 14 says. This is a gift. This is a gift. He that speaks, or she, in a tongue edifies himself. Now, the word edify in the Greek brings out a charging effect. So, I have this real old four-wheeler. It's a Yamaha 660 Grizzly, and it's bad to the bone. <laughs> Rawr! But it's an old four. It's an older one. But man, it can rip. And I love to unleash on it. But I'm telling you this because <laughs> is that the battery died the other day. And so I brought out my charger, and the charger has 20%, 40%, 50%. The lights go up as it's charging, 75%. And then on 100%, it, bring, it, it, it turns green. And I know this is really simple, but when we pray in the Holy Spirit, we move from 20% to the green light. And it's all dependent on you and me. Spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. 
And you can pray in the Spirit. Praying in tongues is primarily a devotional gift. It's a devotional gift. You can be praying in the Spirit as you're busting suds, as you're mowing the lawn, weed whacking. You can pray in the Spirit. Now Jude says this, but you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith by praying in the Spirit. So this, there's this incredible charging effect that takes place from the Holy Spirit. So you don't have to drink a beer again. Okay, there's no condemnation. Listen to me. You don't have to drink wine. You don't have to drink anything. You know, I know it's not what goes into us that, that, that makes us filthy. It's what comes out of us. But listen, you don't have to do those things anymore. You just need to drink in more of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the living waters. The living waters. What made you think that when the early church and, and, and the 120 came out of that upper room, these people are drunk on new Why, was they, why did they say that? Because they were speaking in glossolalia, and so all they could relate it to was is that, well, they're just drunk on new wine. And Peter said, oh, no, this is that, that the prophet Joel prophesied, that in the latter times I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your, and your daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. In other words, when the spirit comes in, something comes out. When the spirit comes in, something comes out. And it's praise to God. Praying and singing in the Spirit is one, of the, is one of the greatest ways to worship God, and it builds up your most holy faith like nothing else can. Okay, how many glad you came to church today? All right, okay, so, all right. Now listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14. And he talks about this here, and he shares all about this and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Spirit individually is for everybody. When the gift of tongues goes into operation, you see, um, that's a different thing. But listen, it says, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So when you first get filled with the Holy Spirit and some gibberish comes out, your natural mind is going to call you a kook. He's going to you, you've lost it now. You see, you've really lost it. But when you pray in the Spirit, you don't kill your, the cells in your body. You reproduce them. There's a reproduction of the power of God in your life when you and I pray in the Spirit. So drinking will kill brain cells. Drinking of the Holy Spirit will only strengthen you and renew you and empower you like a charged up battery. Okay. Now Paul says this. He's given instructions to us. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. Praying the understanding is just like listening to me right now. You can understand me. But if I just turn and begin, that you're going to say, what are you doing? You are strange. That's a personal devotional gift, okay? And so he says, I will sing with the Spirit, that's with tongues, and I will also sing with the understanding. We have what is called earth tunes. When the band is leading, they do an incredible job. There's earth tunes up on the, on the screens. And we can see that and we can understand that. But the higher part of praise is switching over and beginning to sing in the Spirit. Now, primarily, this is done personally and devotionally and in also small groups and things of that nature, but also in worship services. Okay? All right? Okay, so um, there's the... Uh, there's all these gifts. The gift of the Holy Spirit is for every believer. You and I desperately need that. You pray and you receive. And altar workers will be up here to pray for you. I will as well. To receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's when you start. Now praying in tongues is the doorway to the gifts of the Spirit. Okay, there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. You want something that's going to drop your jaw? Jesus had the Spirit without measure. We have it with measure. We have the Spirit with measure. He had the Spirit without measure. Jesus operated in all nine gifts of the Holy Ghost. And all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit were flowing through him. And we really don't have an idea of the people that thronged him when he walked through towns and all of that. It was so busy and so, so, so the pull was so great on their lives, they had to pull away and go up on top of a mountain or go on a boat out in the ocean or something just to eat dinner. I mean, wow, think of that. He had the Spirit without measure. He's our example. Amen? Amen? And he had all nine gifts. 
We have the Spirit with measure, and it's as the Holy Spirit wills, okay? Now, this will help you out here. There are nine gifts in total. Number one, there are three vocal gifts. They say something, okay? Three vocal gifts. They say something. The gift of prophecy, the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, okay? Now, everybody can pray in tongues, but when it comes to corporate settings, all right, and tongues goes into operation, there should be an interpretation, all right? And the best way for these to go into operation is in small groups as well. But then there's, yeah, the interpretation of tongues. Now there's, so there's three, there's, if you can remember this, three vocal gifts. Take a picture of that if you want to. Three vocal gifts, they say something. Say that with me. Three vocal gifts, they say something. They say something. The gift of prophecy okay, which is not prophecy like Bible prophecy, the return of the Lord. It's prophecy given over your life, and it's good. And if it identifies with you and you have a check on the inner, uh, a, a green light on the inner heart that that person has given that to you, then wow. It, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit come to confirm what God has already put in your heart, by the way. For example, you know, um, you know, if Gary comes up to you, and he would never do this, okay, but I'm just saying, right, Gary? He comes up to you and says, uh, thus saith the Lord, the Lord says, drop what you're doing and move to China. <laughs> well, I work at GM, and God's called me there. There, there would be, yeah, I know that's kind of extreme, but you've got some ridiculous Christians out there doing this stuff, okay? Okay, when someone gives a prophecy over your life, it will confirm what God has already put in your heart. Okay, and Gary would never do that. Just use it as as a uh, um, just as a frame of reference. Why, Wendy, why are you looking at me so serious? You're staring a hole through me. <laughs> You're making me nervous. You're giving me a complex. Don't do that. Okay, and so okay, so three gifts. Three gifts. What they say something. Then the next three gifts, they reveal something. They reveal something, and that is the word of wisdom, which is a word for the future for your life. It's always to give you a precise and, and a huge decision making. If the word of wisdom goes into operation, then it's, it's, it's advice for you from the Lord for your future. The word of knowledge operates a lot here at Mount Hope Church. Someone's here and in your, in your left thigh, you've got a pain. I, I'm, not, I'm not under the Holy Spirit, right? I'm just using an example. You, you got a pain in your thigh, and, and there's no way I know you, and there's no way that you knew I knew that about you. You didn't come to my office or anything like that, and we would never operate that way. But all of a sudden, the, the, you know, I have a word, and I share that. Oh, my gosh, that's the Holy Spirit. Would to God that I could turn that on like a light switch. You know, wouldn't that be great? But you can't turn the gifts of the Spirit on like a light switch. It's as the Spirit wills. Okay? I remember one time that... There, there was a, a gentleman here, and I didn't know he was going through this, and I had a word of knowledge about his right thumb. I said, someone's here, and they got a right thumb. Your thumb is just all jacked up, and it's just messed up. The guy immediately stood up, come forward. I prayed for him, and God completely healed him. It's just incredible. So we need this stuff, right? The Bible says, desire the gifts of the Spirit. Don't be afraid of them. To covet them. That word covet is a strong word. To desire them, yet it says the Holy Spirit wills. So it's a blending of the two. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge draws from what, you know, is, is from the past and then speaks. Then there's the discerning of spirits, the discerning of spirits. And the gifts of the uh, nine gifts of the spirit are like tools for the trade, not only for the fivefold ministry, but for your life as well. And then there are three power gifts. And I want to focus on here a little bit. I'm glad you came to church. There are three power gifts, okay? The power gifts do something. They're expressive, and they do something. That is the gift of faith, the working of miracles, and what else? The gifts of healing. Now, the gifts of healing will operate many times in an evangelist's life. You know, and people will just come to those meetings, and, and when the Holy Spirit begins to move, it begins to move through that, 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 that evangelist's gift, and people begin to get healed. They might not even ask the Lord. They just get in the atmosphere. That's why it's so important to get in the atmosphere, amen? amen. To get into church. Because you have one area where faith can grow, and it's your ear. It's the only gate in your entire being that can take faith in. And so if you're not in a place where you're taking faith in, you're hurting yourself. Word to self. Go to church. <laughs> okay? The gift of faith, the working of miracles, and 
the gifts, plural, the gifts of healing, all right? And so, man, I got a lot I want to share. I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking about saying, go ahead and talk to your neighbor just for a minute. We're going to get back into this, okay? Okay, let me share this with you really quick. Um, we're told to eagerly design the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I love this. Are God's expression of his power and ability to meet human need by way of the supernatural. By way of the supernatural. In Acts chapter 8, um, verse 4, Philip, who was an evangelist, he says, Therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, preached Christ unto them. Now listen to this. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did, the working of miracles and the gifts of healing. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many, and uh, those who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. The gifts of healing right there. And there was great joy in that city. Okay? And so... Um, they're supernatural when they go into operation. To, they arrest people's attention. Number two, and I just got some things here. They go into operation that the Holy Spirit wills. Again, you can't turn them on and off like a light switch. All right? And be careful of weird Christians, okay? I had one, and she meant well, down when I was going to school. And she would look at me all the time, and, she just wouldn't, and she'd go, And she's just so over-spiritual. I said, Trudy, what are you doing? God's going to use you in a mighty way. It's almost like you need to hear the music. Oh, oh, oh. oh okay, you know, I appreciate it. All right? It meant well and all that. Are you guys here today? Okay, so number three, they manifest and restore people's lives. I love that's the gifts of healing, working of miracles, and the gift of faith. In uh, Acts chapter 9, um, do I have just a more, uh, one more minute of your time here? Yeah. Acts chapter 9. I didn't have that many yeses, so I guess, I'm, <laughs> I guess we're doing all right. <laughs> we doing all right, Dan? Okay, and in verse 32, watch this. I got all these notes on my Bibles. The whole city turns to God because of the gift. Now it came to pass as Peter went through all parts of the country, he also came down to the saints who dwelt at Lydda. There he found a certain man named Ananias who had been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. So this guy was completely paralyzed. And Peter said to them, Ananias, Jesus Christ heals you. Arise, make your bed. Then he arose immediately. That was the gift of faith in operation. He pointed to him, you know, arise. I mean, whoa, okay. And so he just arose and, and he walked. And look, look what happens. So all who dwelt at Leda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. You see, we need the gifts of the Spirit. We need the gifts of the Spirit, big time. Okay? All right. Verse 36, it doesn't stop, says this, In Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is also translated, you're going you're to laugh at this, Dorcas. Hi, my name's Dorcas. Well, like Dorcas, okay. Anyways, okay. I wouldn't want to be named Dorcas, but if you want to be Dork, I'll go ahead, Dork. <laughs> this woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did, but it happened in those days that she became sick and she died. When they had washed her and laid her in the upper room, since Lydda was near Joppa and the disciples heard that Peter was there, they sent two men to him imploring him not to delay but come to them. Then Peter arose and went to them, and when he had come, they brought him to the upper room. And all the widows stood by him, weeping, showing their tunics, you know, the things she made, and the garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter, I like this, put them all out. Sometimes you just need to get away from the doubt and unbelief. And, you know, maybe they weren't operating doubt and unbelief. They were just, they were sad. They were sad. That's a real thing. They were sad that she... But, but you've got to put them all out because that type of faith won't, won't bring in the power of God. Right. 
But Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened up her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. You have to have a supernatural gift and operation to raise the dead. It has to be the gift of faith. It, it, goes, beyond, it goes beyond regular faith, different kinds of faith. There's natural human faith. This is the same essentially as positive thinking, positive mental attitude, self-confidence. You can step into a boat with this kind of faith, but you'll never walk on water with it. It's good, but it's only natural faith not supernatural. Number two, there's dead faith. That faith is not coupled with action. Faith without works is dead. Number three is devilish faith. It's the kind of faith that will listen but will not obey. These are the different kinds of faith. Saving faith, we're saved by faith, by grace. Okay. Personal faith, that's where you're, uh, you know, you have your faith. You locate where your faith is at to reach out. But then there's the gift of faith. This faith is a powerful gift of the Holy Spirit supernaturally imparted to a believer or a group of believers in an emergency setting, during a crisis, in a time of special opportunity. I love this. The gift of faith enables a person to reach beyond the natural, visible, visible realm and into the invisible, creative realm of God's kingdom and call those things that be not if though they were. What may take 10 years with natural faith, may take only 10 seconds with the gift of faith. 10 seconds with the gift of faith. I love the subject of faith. I live for it. It's awesome. Incredible. Mark Barclay, he's a pastor up in Midland. Very respected man. I like Mark a lot. His, uh, his wife got killer cancer. And he went over and he spoke to her body and he commanded the cancer to die in Jesus' name. And it did. His daughter got killer cancer. And they did the same thing. And she lives today to glorify God. Their grandson, they have a pool. Well, drowned in the pool for, of all things. Their grandson. He came out and he commanded him to rise from the dead, and he lives today. Amen. Special surge of that, that gift as the Holy Spirit wills. How many would say we need the gift of faith? Hallelujah. The gift of faith. The word of knowledge. There was an evangelist in Florida that was speaking and he stopped in the middle of his message, said, there's a man here that's carrying a weapon. And you said that you're just going to kill yourself and commit suicide. Everything is over. But if you hand the gun over, God will save you. And the guy handed the gun over and was forgiven of all his sin and was weeping, and he got saved that night. I just like, these things are powerful. They're incredible. How many glad you came to church? Let me jump back. I want to close on this right here. Okay, so three vocal gifts, they say something. The gift of prophecy, the gift of tongues, interpretation tongues. Three revelational gifts, they reveal something. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits. And then three gifts that do something. That is the gift of faith, working miracles, and the, uh, the gifts of healing. But the discerning of spirits, and I love how this is communicated right here. It's number four. They protect the church. God's work from hypocrites, imposters, false prophets, and false teachers. Do I have just one more minute or two? Yeah. Okay. It wasn't that loud, so I need a little more confidence. Yeah. Okay, that's a little better. Okay. Okay. So, like we read before in Acts chapter 8, this is where the discerning of spirits goes into operation. It's really something. Um, and... Uh, you know, it says for unclean spirits crying out with loud voice when Philip went down to Samaria. Well, verse 9 says this, but there was a certain man called Simon 
who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria. So he was operating in witchcraft, claiming to be some, someone great, to whom he also gave heed, whom they gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. See, all Satan can do is, is, is twist the truth and copy what God does and then taint it. That's all he can do. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. So this guy was operating in witchcraft, and people were just, whoa, look at this guy. They'll call, they'll call 1-900 numbers or 1-800s, the psychics and all that. That's all witchcraft. Have nothing to do with that stuff. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed, and when he... When he was baptized, so this guy actually got saved and was baptized too. He continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and the signs which were done. So obviously he was given over to the supernatural at a young age, this guy. But Satan got him early and twisted those gifts, as Simon did. And he's operating all sorts of sorcery. So he's watching what Philip's doing, all these miracles. Oh my gosh. And that, that's, those are calling cards for the church. Miracles are calling cards for the church. When I was in Peru, there was a guy who walked right out of a wheelchair. And we said, oh my gosh. You know, it's just, it was a calling card. And a lot of people got saved. And so they're calling cards to God's grace. It says, now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them, they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he has not fallen upon them, any of them, but they only had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, meaning water baptism. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. It says, when Simon saw, watch this, when Simon saw through that the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, give me this power also, that anyone on whom I may lay my hands on will receive the Holy Spirit. And Peter said to him, your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Now, you've got to add a little enthusiasm and animation to this, okay? It didn't, it didn't say this. Peter said to him, your money perish, you know. No, you perish. He says, you have neither part nor portion of this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. The, the discerning of spirits is, all, is operating. This is it right here. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you, for I see... Here we go, the discerning of spirits. You can see things. You automatically know things. And it's scary at times when this goes over. It's happened many times in my life. And, and I, I, there are times I wish it wouldn't have happened. I know things are going to happen before they happen. And it's as the Holy Spirit was. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me that none of these things that you have spoken may come upon me. That's awesome, Amen. So that was discerning of the spirits. They reveal something. They reveal something. How many glad you came to church today? Okay. So these gifts. So if you can remember that, three are vocal. They say something. Three are revelational. They reveal something. And three do something. They're the power gifts. The gift of faith, the working of miracles, and the gifts of healing. Now, how many here need to be healed in your body? If that's you, stand to your feet right now. If it's you, just... Stand to your feet. You need to be healed in your body. If you need to be healed in your body. Okay. I'm going to ask class cooperation. Can other believers, if you don't feel comfortable, do this, don't do this. Altar workers and everything, surround them right now because we're going to pray the prayer of faith and I believe that God's going to heal you. Give you a minute to get to that person. The Bible says pray for one another that you may be healed. Father, we worship you and we thank you, Lord. There's enough faith in this room to move a lot of mountains. Lord, I thank you that these people that are standing are precious to you, precious to me. Thank you, Lord. They love you. And Lord, you love them. Lord, we know that when you went to the cross, you took our infirmities and you bore our sicknesses upon the tree. And by your stripes, we are healed. 
Right now, Lord, we just thank you for healing in their body. I speak to their body in the name of Jesus, and I command the sickness to leave. I command the cancer to go. I command the illness to leave. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I decree that you're healed from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for giving them the Caleb factor. Thank you that when they're 80, they'll feel like they're 40. Thank you they got a back like an ox, eyes like an eagle, and the strength of a lion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that. All God's people said, amen. Amen. Real quick, bow your head with me. You're watching online right now, and you never recall a time where you gave your heart to the Lord. It's really simple. You're here today, and you never recall a time where you gave your heart to the Lord. It's really simple, okay? I'm going to lead you out in a prayer, inviting the Lord to come into your heart. You have to vocalize it. You have to ask the Lord to come in. He doesn't invade on your life. He's a perfect gentleman. He knocks and waits for you to open. And when you open, the Spirit of God comes in. Everyone needs to be saved. Everyone needs their sin to be washed. Everyone needs their name to be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Say this with me. Dear God in heaven, I admit to you, I need you. Be my Savior, Jesus. Be my healer. Be my deliverer. Be my provider. Be my protector. I boldly confess that Jesus Christ is my personal Savior today and forever. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Those watching online, if you just said that prayer, you follow the prompts and you can get the book, The New Life, The Start of Something Wonderful. Come to basic training as well. How many glad you came to church today? Okay, we're not done. We're not done. I want to pray Psalm 91 over your life. Stand up. Release your faith with me. There's a canopy of protection. Lord, thank you that no evil will befall these people, neither any plague come near their dwelling. You will give their, your angels charge over them, keep them in all of their ways. A thousand fall by their side, 10,000 on the right hand, but it will not come near you in Jesus' name. I rebuke car wrecks. I rebuke cancer. I rebuke broken bones in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your healing. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. We love you. Altar workers will be up here. If you need further prayer, you're dismissed. Don't forget to visit the display. Join with me 12 weeks in Maximum Impact, personal development course designed to help you to be a winner in this life. We invite you to join us in person at Mount Hope Church in Grand Blank, Michigan. If you'd like more information about Mount Hope Church and Pastor John Gallinetti, visit our website at mhcgb.com.